If you don't know the difference between follow shots and rolling, you will play so many shots wrong. Many people think that the follow shots and rolling is pretty much the same thing because of the cue ball moving forward. But there are actually two different types of shots. But there's so much more when it comes to the follow shot. You need to understand how the follow shot works, what are the pros and cons, when are you supposed to play a follow shot, and when is a follow shot just the wrong choice. So by watching this video, you will get more knowledge about this whole topic. You will understand the difference much better and have the tools and ideas to practice these type of shots so you can make a better choice in the future. So, overall, this will upgrade your game. Let's dig a little deeper into the world of follow and roll shots. Compared to other type of shots, the follow shot seems a bit boring sometimes, but it's actually very, very important for your game. When people learn the follow shot, they're like, okay, I have to hit high on the cue ball, cue ball moves forward, that's it, thank you, I'm done. So you can say that everything starts with rolling and ends with the force follow. And there are many different type of shots in between. So they're kind of the same, but different. <laughs> so it's important to understand that even if you hit it in the center or really high, the cue ball is always going to move forward somehow. But it all depends on how much spin, speed, rotation you actually add to the cue ball. In this case, I'm rolling it. The next shot, I am playing more of a force follow shot. In the slow motion videos, you can actually see it much better. This is a roll shot. Not much spin on the cue ball. This is more of a follow shot, a little bit of spin, but still not a lot. This is now a pretty tough follow shot already, but the next one is like a maximum. The ball actually even jumped after the contact. In this case, you can see, you can have so much spin that even after hitting the rail, the cue ball still goes forward. And this one, once again, is a maximum force follow. So let's start with rolling. So overall, you can say that rolling or roll shots are the most natural way to play the cue ball. So the roll shots are really, really important for your position game. Sometimes you need this type of shot when you're playing position in a smaller area, but you also need it when you play position over the whole table. But you don't want maybe too much spin and rotation in the cue ball, and you want the path of the cue ball to be as natural as possible. But the most difficult thing is deciding when to use what type of shot. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you all the examples where people sometimes make the wrong choice. Also, rolling does not influence the path of the cue ball too much and is also not influencing the object ball too much. And rolling is not just important for playing position, it's also extremely important for other areas of the game. For example, safety, kicking and bank shots. A follow shot or a force follow shot is played when you want to go further with the cue ball or where you need more speed and power in the cue ball. For example, when you're breaking up clusters or, for example, think about straight pull when you have a break shot and you want to break up the, 50, uh, the 14 balls. 15 balls, Jasmine. Wake up. <laughs> um, so then you tend to play a follow shot and a force follow shot. But knowing that because of the extreme forward rotation, it will change the path of the cue ball a little bit and it will also influence the object ball. What's also important to understand is that a force follow shot will make the shot more difficult because you have to accelerate the cue more, so that means you have to add more speed into the shot, you play more follow through, and you also have to hit much higher on the cue ball than when you're rolling the shot. And that sometimes makes the people a bit more insecure too. Whenever you play certain type of shots, Always remember, as soon as you add a lot of rotation to the cue ball, no matter what type of shot we're talking about, this will influence something else. So it will influence the cue ball, the path of the cue ball, or even the object ball, or the angles that you're playing. So everything is influencing everything. With a force follow shot, you will always hear a force follow shot will straighten the angle of the cue ball. Now, let's take this shot for example. Here, I'm playing a follow shot. It is already a follow shot, it's not rolling, and you see where the cue ball went, went into the long rail. Now I'm setting up the exact same shot, and I'm gonna play a maximum force follow shot now. And you will see the path of the cue ball will change, it will straighten the angle, and now I am not touching the long rail at all. But all this knowledge is also important for your standard position game, because you need to understand when is rolling better than force follow. 
Now let's look first at what it does to the cue ball and how this is influencing your position game. Typical situation. You want to play position for the nine ball and you choose force follow. Now this happens. The spin, the rotation grabs after the rail and stops the cue ball. You have to hit half ball and just roll it and you will automatically come down to the nine ball. If you want to go rail first, you can also do that. But again, if you do that with force follow, this happens. Still grabs after the rail and the cue ball is going to stop itself. So go rail first, roll the shot and you're just fine. Now with the next three shots, you can play draw shot of course too, but I'm just playing force follow here to show you this. These shots now are typical force follow shots because you need a lot of speed in the cue ball in order to come back down for the 10 ball. Same here, you might even apply a little bit of side spin if you need it, but you just saw now how the cue ball started to grab and actually shortened the angle a little bit because of the force follow. Same here, now I added a little bit of side spin to just hit the long rail. Now, in this case, I still need a lot of speed, but if I go force follow, look what happens to the cue ball, straightens the angle and comes straight out of the rail. I don't need that. So in this case, I have to play like a stun follow shot so I get a better angle and come down further for the 10 ball. Now, in this case, just force follow would be the wrong choice because it will straighten the angle and I hardly have any. And then this happens. So I still have to play follow shot, but with a little bit of stun and side spin so I can get the most out of this little angle. Now, this is such a beauty when it comes to position game. If this shot is played wrong so many times there is no force follow here people look what happens i'm stopping the cue ball out of the rail when i play more force follow look what happens to the cue ball that's a no-go you have to roll the shot make sure you roll it you can even add a little bit of natural side spin so you increase the speed and then it's no problem to get down to the nine ball the best way to show you what all of this does to the cue ball is when you play kick shots. So for your safety game, that's really important to know. Here I'm rolling the ball. And in this case, the predator table, because of the new cloth and new balls, is playing a bit long. So I have to hit a little bit before the side pocket. When I do that, I make the nine ball, no problem. Now I'm playing the same shot with follow. Look what happens. Cue ball goes short, it shortens the angle. Now I'm playing low on the cue ball. I shorten it even more. When I play the same shot half table, same thing, I'm rolling it. No problem to pocket the nine ball. Now I'm playing the same shot again with follow. Look what happens. I shorten the angle again. But all of this rotation in the cue ball is not bad. You can use it for your advantage. So besides shortening the angle, that forward spin can be used. For example, here with safety shots, go high on the cue ball, play a force follow, and the cue ball will stop after the contact. Very good safety. If you want to play kick shots, also understand when you kick from behind, like the nine ball here, always play follow. The cue ball will easily stop after the contact. Here I can play a normal follow shot and play position like this, which is still fine, don't get me wrong. Now, if I play this shot with a little bit of more force follow, I make the cue ball grab even more and therefore change the angle and I come back down to the nine like this. Of course, fancy shots like this one, not really used in a match a lot, but still possible with a force follow. This shot here is a pretty cool one, actually. Look at the setup. There's not much you can do with the eight ball going into the other direction is probably pretty tough. So force follow high, a little bit of left spin, and this happens. Beautiful, isn't it? So we have talked a lot about the cue ball, but now let's have a look at the object ball. In order to understand why all of this is influencing the object ball, you have to understand the following. Any rotation you add to the cue ball will transfer to the object ball, but it's always gonna be the opposite. So if you play a follow shot, the object ball is gonna have a draw. If you play a draw shot, the object ball is going to have follow. And the same thing applies to the side spin. If you play right side spin on the cue ball, the object ball is going to have left side spin. Now, with that said, we're going to look at shots where this knowledge really matters, especially bank shots. I'm setting up the exact same bank shot. And first, I'm just naturally rolling the shot. No problem for me to pocket the nine ball. Now I'm going to play a follow shot and Look what happens to the nine ball because of the draw that the nine ball has, it shortens the angle. Now I'm going low on the cue ball. 
now the nine ball goes long and now i'm trying to play the shot with a stun shot and once again it's gonna shorten the angle so therefore you always have to adjust your aiming point according to the type of shot but you can use that effect too like in this case i'm going low on the cue ball and i can actually change the direction of the nine ball after the second rail pretty fancy shot of course not my first choice in a game but still looks cool so when you're rolling the shot you hit it in the center a little bit above the center you don't want to add too much spin and rotation to the cue ball and the cue ball will move forward after the contact now when you want to play a really good and high quality follow shot even force follow shot you have to hit very high on the cue ball and of course you also have to adjust your speed your follow through your cue acceleration a little bit so now how are you going to play this shot well Take the cue ball, start in the center, and all the room from the center to the top of the cue ball is your area for rolling and for follow. Rolling seems fairly easy, and it also feels easy because you have so much room, but as soon as you go to the top of the cue ball and you really want to play a solid follow or force follow shot, you then soon realize that the shot is more difficult. You have less room, so now it's even more important to have a straight cue delivery and a smooth acceleration through the cue ball. Of course, that should be important to every shot you're playing, um, and it should be the foundation, but especially with a force follow, you see right away if you have a consistent straight stroke through the cue ball. When you're playing a force follow shot, also make sure you hold the cue as level as possible. Because as soon as you elevate the cue a little bit, you make the cue ball jump. So first of all, you lose a little bit of the follow uh, spin or rotation, but also because of that jumping onto the other object ball, you have to change your aiming. And just because it's called force follow doesn't mean you're supposed to force your whole body and shoulder and weight and cue through the cue ball in order to play this kind of follow shot. Just focus on a nice and slow backstroke, then a smooth acceleration through the cue ball. Play, you know, make sure you have a good and decent follow through and a as straight as possible cue delivery. That's the key points for playing a solid follow shot. Now here are some tips for your training session. Always start with straight shots and short distances. I love to use the target that I put on the table so I can really visualize where I want the cue ball. So you really learn how to adjust your rolling and your follow shots. Always start with the same type of shot. So do a few drills, straight shots, different distances, and make sure you just roll the balls. Then you can switch to a follow shot, and then after that to a force follow shot. Eventually, with time, you can set up angle shots, do the same thing, roll it first, then follow, then force follow, to also understand and learn what it does to the cue ball and how you can use that knowledge then for your own position game. Then I also suggest to set up the typical position situations where you know you're either gonna roll the shot or play a follow shot. Play both types of shot and see what happens and learn from that. If you have a hard time focusing on the aiming or hitting point on the cue ball, I always love to use those training balls like the red one I just showed you in my video or the Jim Rampy training ball. All right, people, that's it with this video. I hope you understand this whole topic a little bit better now. And always remember, these type of shots are the foundation of your game, of your position game. So take your time with it and have fun practicing. <laughs> I talk to you soon.